Hey, this is Pete from Graphics. Today we're talking about canvas printing in PhotoGize. So over the last month, we've put in some specific optimizations just for canvas, both in Photo Central and in PhotoGize kiosk. We've added a product group called Canvas where all the new canvas products that we create and that you create will sit. We've updated our render engine to include the ability to do a mirror edged on these canvas products and to also allow for static text that describes where the edge is text that can't be edited by the customer so canvas support is live right now in photo central and kiosk in all the shipping versions you can use pre-built canvas products that are available today if you load photogize lab and look at the product sheet you'll see Canvas products uh, ranging from 8 by 10 to 16 by 20 inches, and each of these will be have landscape and portrait templates that are an inch and a half wide, uh, then that have black, white, photo, and mirrored edges. And of course, you can create your own canvas products, and we're going to talk about that a little later in the video. So let's first uh, go over to our Photogize Lab software and just take a look at the uh, the pre-built canvases. So if I click on my account, this is our sandbox account, and I click on the icon up here for product sheet, um, I'm going to load my product sheet, and um, I can say I just want to see my canvases. So these are the canvases that are presently available, um, as, you, as I said, 8 by 10 to, to 16 by 20, and all you have to do is click on edit and touch whether you want to publish them online or kiosk, you can change the description, give them a weight, a price, and the type of fulfillment that you want to make. Now, uh, you'll note that this, the output size is fairly large. The it's a 16 by 20 actually goes out at 26 by 22. So that's really, uh, so what, six inches, for example, in the 16 dimension, it's six inches wider, which seems like a lot, but consider this. Your 16 by 20 actually has an inch and a half uh, edge on either side so that's three inches plus you need another inch and a half on the back at least to do a staple right so it's an inch and a half on the sides two sides inch and a half in the back two backs and now you have six extra inches in each dimension and we will go over that when we talk about creating our own canvas prints so i've already published these online given them a price so let's take a look at Photo Central. We'll click on the shop page, and uh, at the bottom you can see our new product group, Canvas Print. So let's let's click there, and you'll see the products that we published in Photogize Lab. Uh, and I'm going to click on the 1620 Canvas, select some photos. So this is what the canvas looks like when we're compositing it in the mixing bowl page. Um, so we have these uh, white canvases, both landscape and, and uh, portrait, black. This is the photo edge. So the photo edge uh, can potentially cut off a head if you had a portrait, but you know a vista landscape would be fine. And uh, finally, we have this mirrored edge, uh, which we've defined, which kind of which uh, sort of uh, takes the uh, the very edge of the photo and duplicates it out. So you end up without cutting heads off and, and actually getting the whole photo, but it looks like you have edge-to-edge -edge photo. So it's kind of cool. Um, so this is th these are the canvases that we've supplied in, um, uh, uh, in our system that you can instantiate today for both Photogize Kiosk and Photo Central. Um, but let's uh, let's talk about creating our your own canvas products. So you do this in Cloud Cover, and you use the product type called Canvas. Now you really need um, two PSD templates, two Photoshop templates, a standard and a final template. The standard template is going to be the edge that you want. In our case, it was a one and a half inch edge all around and some static text that describes the edges. And that text can't be changed by the customer, but it says things like, this is the edge, or something along those lines. 
then you additionally need a final template that removes that static text and also has an additional inch and a half or whatever your again your your edge definition is is all the way around so you can have a surface to do stapling and if you want to create a mirror edge you need to use the mirror edge filter to uh, achieve this mirror effect so um, let's just go back to Photoshop and take a look at some of our templates all right so this uh, this is our, our standard template and this is our final template so a couple of things to notice about the two templates one is that the the standard template has this inner this is the actual this is 16 by 20 so this 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 blue box constitutes the photo and that's exactly 16 by 20 and then as you can see we have about an inch and a half on the edge and that constitutes the, uh, the edge that flips around to the side that um, you see on the side of the canvas in the case of the final template uh, the text uh, well the that it's the same size photo but instead of being an inch and a half it's three inches because you have the, the side and then you have the back right so that's in our case with an inch and a half border we actually have three inches all the way around in addition so you also see uh, that I have these text boxes here so let's just take a look at one of them like this is the side text box and um, we use this orientation number of 15 which means uh, bottom to top text and we say at the very end that we're going to be using some static text specifically the words side edge and we're going to I'm going to show you this in detail how this breaks down but you can see that that's our this is our top to bottom the orientation is 25 this is our bottom text and it just says straight up orientation of five and this is our top text straight up orientation of five uh, the photo uh, has this new mirrored edge filter in it uh, again I'm going to show you more detail of that in one second and both on the final uh, version and on the uh, the final version as the same thing as the standard template version so they both have this mirror um, filter now uh, the the X's just to go back here so the I, if you notice I don't have real text here I have X's and that's just to give me enough space in case side edge takes a little bit bigger or smaller than I had originally anticipated so you could type in side edge here but if it's if it's if the font that Adobe is using is slightly different than the font that our rendering engine is using and slightly smaller our rendering engine font is slightly smaller like cut it off so you must just I just throw X's up to, just to simplify things also you'll notice that the color here is 255 255 255 it's actually white so the color that you see in Photoshop on in text is actually it doesn't govern the color that we use this is the governing uh, color specification the one in the layer name and I picked white because uh, I think white's going to look better over as, as, as the, the word side edge looks going to look better when you're just doing the design than black it won't, it won't it will pop better on most photos so I picked I picked white to put white here all right, so um, let's just go back to our presentation, and I want to talk about this text layer. So if you've done some template design, you'll be mostly familiar with this. Uh, the first uh, the first part of this, and this is, this is the layer name, right, in Photoshop. And the first thing you see is the typeface. The next is the size. So this is a 42-point text, um, and we add a zero there so we can get granularity right so it's 420 points times 10 you could actually add a style so Arial bold you would actually put Arial in the as the typeface and a one here to make Arial bold and as I said before our orientation and you can dig into the retailer central manual that tells you what all the orientations are but basically your 1 through 9 is standard orientation 11 through 19 is top to bottom and 21 through 29 is bottom to top orientation and I use those orientations to get the left right top and bottom text boxes in my uh, on my template this is my RGB color in the case of the templates that I, I built I wanted I put white so that was 255 255 255 this happens to be black that you can see here uh, rotation is uh, is a little tricky right so this is not orientation this is rotation rotation means rotating each individual letter by a certain amount and you might do that to get say top to bottom text where all the the, um, the letters are actually right reading right so some sometimes you might want to have a, a, 
typeface that looks like that or type that looks like that. So this is the new thing, which is um, after all of that, which has all been there up to date, uh, to date, we've added this ability to put a filter in. And there are other filters that you can look at in the Retailer Central Manual, but this particular text filter is for uh, static text. So I put the word static and colon, and then the words that I want to see put on the, the actual uh, template. And static text is text that can't be edited by the um, by the customer. So it's a good way of putting announcements or information. And we're using it to put, um, in the case of these canvases, we're using it to say that we're the edges, the side edge. Now, because it is static text, you won't only want to put it on the standard template, not on the final template, because if you put it on the final template, it will get produced. I mean, assuming you don't want to be produced on the final template, only put this, use this specifier on the uh, standard template. And let's take a look at the photo layer. It's a little simpler, but uh, this is something both in the standard layer and a standard template and on the final template. You, you've seen this before, which is we have a sample photo. And then we, we've added this new filter called uh, mirror edge. So when you put this in, we actually mirror the photo and let it bleed over the edge, over the edges all in all four directions. And nominally, you can give it a distance. I, you, we, this means it's it's in inches. So this is a 1.5 inch bleed. So um, we stop the bleed after 1.5 inches. So what you're going to end up with is a bleed around the edge, and then the, uh, the back will be um, will, will be blank. So that's um, those are some of the specifications on how to create uh, canvas templates. Now, if we go back to our uh, Let's go back to our browser. Um, so I have some templates here. Let's let's look for uh, let's look for some canvas templates. I think we want to go to Okay, so let's go back to our uh, Retailer Central. Now, I'm using Photogize Manager here. This is like the admin version of Retailer Central. So just ignore the stuff up here and look down here because this is what you're going to see in your Retailer Central. So this, I used, I created these products in our manager, but this is how they're going to look in your, like in your Retailer Central. So you can see that the products themselves, um, I gave them names and descriptions, and here's the size. Again, you're sizing to the final template. So a 16 by 20, because it has the inch and a half and the inch and a half, really is going to be an extra six inches. So a 16 by 20 product is actually going to be plus six, 2200 and 2600 height and width, right? And my templates, um, this is where I put my templates. My templates are going to have things like, um, let's take a look at the templates. When I, when I created the products and then put the templates in, uh, you can see I have a standard template here and a final template. And again, that's important for the canvas so that you can have the the, the, the final has the full width and the standard has the, the shorter width. So it's easier for a person to see on the screen. Plus, um, they can, you can put in the static text. So this, you know, this is the standard template that you're seeing on the screen. The final template is going to be another inch and a half bigger than this. Uh, and I, you know, I'm doing standard and final again, so I can eliminate this text and also so that I can make it a little smaller so it's a little easier to design. So that is sort of the short story on on using canvas prints in Photogize kiosk and Photo Central and I hope you enjoyed it.